So we were just talking about some of those overarching pedagogical strategies and theories that kind of inform our work, but let's get down to the more concrete stuff. So what do we actually tell our Chiron tutorial instructors when they are getting onboarded and they're getting ready to lead their first tutorial? What are some of the kind of specific strategies and tips that you give them to make their sessions more uh, participatory and more suited for kind of 21st century skills? Right, this is a very good point. Uh, I think peer assessment is the first mm. thing that comes to my mind. Pairing up students so they can evaluate each other's work and discuss it together. And this is also great for them to get to know each other. You know, we talked about a lot fostering communities mm. um, in this course. So this is a very good way to do that. Right, because our students almost never have the chance to meet in person and often are studying separately in MOOCs, so it's a nice way for them to get to know each other exactly. and then hopefully they stay in contact after the tutorial and keep working together, right? Exactly. Yeah, following up on, on kind of this evaluation topic and feedback, um, another thing we do to encourage our instructors um, for feedback is to make sure that they're not just thinking about that as something that happens at the end of the course, like the summative type of assessment to measure their knowledge in a whole topic, but rather to put the effort into giving students feedback throughout so that they can kind of discover their own individual, um, their strength areas, their growth areas, the areas that they need to work on um, to have a more personalized kind of learning journey. That's a great point. Actually, I would have loved to have that myself <laughs> during my <laughs> study. <laughs> um, yes, another thing I can think of is pretty obvious, actually, this fostering discussion online, uh, of course, during the online session. Um, this you could do uh, also, you don't have to do it while the during the session, you can also do it, uh, you can also encourage the students to do it, uh, for example, in Google Classroom, uh, to meet up and organizing some online study groups, for example, is also a good way uh, for them to get to know each other and to work on uh, collaboratively, collaboratively work on their knowledge. Right, and this is kind of what we were talking about earlier about the students should not just be ingesting content, they should be constructing their own content and they should be doing that exactly. together on a peer, on a peer level. Um, another kind of nice way to foster that autonomy in the students is to have uh, the students take over parts of sessions. So to encourage the instructor to let students lead a certain part of the session so that they have a little bit more control. Um, it also is a way to really demonstrate your understanding of something when you can actually teach others about it. And it also lets the student focus on what they find most interesting, which kind of enhances that personal connection to the topic. Yeah, that's great. Um, also, this makes me think of uh, collaborative problem solving, which could be also a very great tool. Uh, try just not to, you know, give assignment to uh, individuals, but try to um, encourage them to actually come to a solution together collaboratively. This, uh, um, yeah, it's the outcome should be a collectively constructed knowledge. So this is a very good way to do that. Definitely, and then students have to kind of try out solutions together and implement them and then they can also evaluate them and see if they worked or not. Yes. Yeah. And another thing that technology affords us is there's all these other resources that students can use and can kind of go beyond what they're learning in the class. And so either to kind of add to the knowledge that they're gaining in the course, they can use things like even social media or OER, um, but also they can think of more creative ways to fulfill assignments if that's an option. So for instance, using video or spreading that knowledge to other, to other people uh, through online means. What? Right, right. You can have it as an assignment, right? Go out exactly. and like mm. um, share your opinion about this uh, mm. after having read this text. It's very, very good. Um, okay, another one. This is my favorite one, actually. This is the ePortfolio. Um, this is something we are experimenting a bit at Chiron right now, giving the students the ownership to actually build their own curriculum um, and having a digital overview of what are their, their skills, the things they have achieved studying online. I think this is very great for two main reasons. One is like when you're applying to university or to, uh, to get a job, you can just present like a very good overview not just the things, you know, not just the certificates that you have, but also what skills you worked on, um, what are your strengths. And, and so this is like one reason. And the other reason is um, that this is a very powerful reflection tool for your studying. So you get the chance to reflect on your uh, uh, skills, on your learnings. So this is very powerful for learning, as we know. 
Yeah, and it's, I think it's a really good thing that Chiron is trying to experiment with this, especially because our students are so diverse. I mean, they're refugees, but as we know, refugees are a really diverse population, and we have students who have already acquired a bachelor's degree who study with us, and we have other students who haven't started higher education who study with us, and not only their educational backgrounds, but their language levels, where they come from. So it's important not just to look at where the student is at the end, but where they started and where they got to, because that progression can tell you sometimes a lot more than this is just where the student is now. This is a very good point, actually, because overcome this way to think about education, this pretty standardized way, it's not just like a fancy thing to do because it's a trend, but we can also see that it actually opens up a lot of different paths for students that don't come from a traditional setting or they didn't have the chance, they didn't have the chance to go through the traditional path. Right, totally, yeah. And the last one, uh, one of my favorites, which is actually really simple, is uh, encouraging the instructors to think about the language that they're using and how inclusive they're making the discussion through their language. So for instance, just little things, like instead of relaying some content to the students and then saying, do you have any questions? Which is a yes or no answer to say, what questions do you have? Kind of assuming like we should have questions, you should you know, have curiosity sparked from this and should have things that you still wanna know. Or even if it's a really shy group, you could ask them instead of what questions do you have, um, give me now two or three questions about what I just said. And usually when one student starts asking questions, others will as well and the whole discussion becomes more interactive. Right, that's true, that's a very good strategy. Yeah, the yes. simple thing sometimes. <laughs> Maybe now we can ask our audience to uh, post here some of their strategies because we also want to learn. Oh, of course, yeah. People should definitely post theirs in the comments or in the forum, and hopefully we can get discussion going about that. So how about we ask our viewers not just to, if they have any questions or comments, but say what questions or comments yes. do you have <laughs> <laughs> to mirror what we were just talking about. And one of the funny things as well is a lot of these actually can be used offline as well. It's just about learning how to adapt them for the online environment. So there's some familiar strategies there for our instructors too. Great point. Yeah.